All right, we are ready for some farming simulator. Well, let's go. Let me get the camera turned on. All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to anybody, everybody who is watching either live or on the VOD. I appreciate you all. And uh, we are ready for some more farming simulator working on our start from scratch run here on Elm Creek, of course. And uh, just dropped off a whole bunch of sorghum at the uh the grain mill so we're gonna go grab a little bit more from the uh harvester over here just because we know that if we can empty out the harvester from this first field this top field up here at uh or i guess a bottom field field 50 then we know that the other field has exactly what we need for the chickens so i'm gonna go ahead and just come over here and uh, get you dropped off but yeah uh I think some of you guys know I've been sick for a few days. I'm still a little bit, my throat, my voice still probably sounds a little bit weird, but uh, it sounds worse than I feel, I guess. Uh, I mean, I'm not feeling great, but I'm, I'm all right. I can definitely get through a stream. I think I got through, I got through Monday's stream, all right. So should be able to get through today's stream just fine. All right, so all of that can go into the grain mill because everything off this last field will be... Um, We'll go into the chickens, and I believe it's just about exactly what we need for the chickens. All right, we'll get that rolling. We'll get this dropped off. My game just crashed. Hello? Game? My game dishes crash. All right, I'll be right back. Let me get this <laughs> start back up again. That's a little weird. I've never had farming simulator crash like that. I don't think I've had farming simulator crash in a very long time. Strange. It just froze up and decided to die on us. We hear you just no game. What do you mean you just no game? I'm not sure what that means. <clears throat> all right we'll get this load back up and then we'll get back to the game i'm not sure i've never like i said i've never had it crash before like that probably means i got it yeah i gotta do all this again that's all right we'll just get the um stuff dropped off again and then we'll <laughs> start on this field again hopefully it does not crash on us again. All right, did you drop it off? Looks good. How much we got in there now? Um, 40,000 liters. No, it's, just, it's something. Obviously, we're going to have less than we did last cycle because of the, um, uh, the fact that we did use that other field for uh, sugar beets now. Oh yeah, the Stormtrooper color scheme. Yeah, that white tractor looks look pretty cool. All right, let's go see if we can get this started again and not crash the game this time, hopefully. Is 
Let's save the game real quick, just so we don't have to redo this again. If for some reason there's something weird about starting working on this field, which makes no sense. All right, looks like we're okay. <laughs> I guess we're fine. I no idea why that would have crashed like that. It's so weird. Oh, well. I didn't even get it like an error or anything like that. It just, just went away. Yeah, this tractor, I'm pretty happy with this tractor. It's, it's looking pretty cool. I, I don't know that I would ever buy a white vehicle, but I like white with black trim. I, I, I'm not going to lie. That does look pretty clean. Well, again, other than the fact that the tractor itself is quite dirty. All right, so this will be the last of the grain that we drop off here. The rest of it will go for the chickens. And how are the chickens doing right now? They're, they're getting low, but we're about to get a, a full load for them, so they're they're going to be just fine. All right, how are we doing on water? Water is all filled, uh, basically all filled up. We can technically get a little bit more. Might as well, while we're waiting on the uh, harvester to do its thing. I can't believe we're already almost done with March. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Oh, hello there. You are very attractive, my friend, but stop tempting me. I mean, that could run a pretty big header. <laughs> it sure would speed things up pretty nicely. But, I mean, our current header, our current guy doesn't sell for very much. We would have no money for the harvester for those sugar beets at that point. Would love to speed up our grain harvest a lot, but... Just can't afford or justify that right now. Not with everything else we got going on. Um, no, I have a mod that allows me to place anything anywhere on the map. Technically, I could place those those uh, I could place those greenhouses on somebody else's land if I wanted to. It's just a place anywhere. I think it's literally the name of the mod. But if I were to come in here and go to like production greenhouses and just grab a greenhouse, I could place it in the middle of this field over here. It doesn't matter. So, because I could place it anywhere, I could place them next to each other without any issues. I've been running on Place Anywhere mod probably since Farming Simulator, definitely since Farming Simulator 19. Maybe even further than back. Maybe from 17 for the little bit of time I played that as well. Um, it just makes life so much easier. And since we're not we're not actually uh, we don't care about the drop off the uh, the outputs from these because um, we're just selling it straight to the uh, to the world basically um, we are we, we I, was, I didn't mind putting them together like that so the only we only will either uh, we'll either be selling it straight from the greenhouse or we will send it straight to the bakery we will never have it come out in boxes it's just not worth the hassle. Strawberries are pretty, pretty annoying to deal with, quite frankly. Uh, they, the best thing to deal with is the lettuce. They all sell for basically the same amount, lettuce, tomatoes, and strawberries. They're basically the exact same amount for the same amount of input. So if you're going to choose between those, I would always recommend lettuce because lettuce just 
is the least amount of crates for the same amount of money. So there's less less hassle with delivering them. Yeah, it's not worth selling the strawberry straight up through the boxes. I mean, do you get a little bit more money? Sure, but it's a, so much more hassle because they just produce so many crates. The peppers from the potato processing mod are real good money. Hmm, interesting. I've never seen that one. All right. How are we doing, Mr. Harvester? Almost there. Yeah, last time I actually tried to transport a full, like, semi-trailer load of strawberries. It probably has something to do with the uh, autoload mod I was using, but my game completely lagged out because it was just trying to rent, like, I don't know, it was trying to manage all the different little strawberries and stuff. It was really weird. I just don't mess with it that much anymore. Doubles up your options from the greenhouses. Eh, that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't, I don't use the greenhouses for anything these days except for stuff that I need for production facilities. So, like, I just, I don't. That's the only reason I have those because I'm going to use the strawberries for the, uh, for the cakes. Yeah, there's no reason not to have other greenhouse options if they all sell for about the same price. Just kind of adds more flavor to the game. I, I agree with that. I mean, I wish there was more stuff in the game as is, you know? I think we... Granted, they probably don't put a lot of stuff in the game because they know that people can mod in whatever that's missing. So, there's no reason for the uh, game developer to put everything in if they know that they can basically get free labor to do the do the fill-ins for stuff that's not in the game. It's smart. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I do wish more of it was just in the base game. All right, chickens, you guys thought you were going to run out of food. I'm sorry, but you're not. We're good. We got you. We got you. A whole bunch of food now. Alrighty. Once we get this done, should be good to fast forward. Uh, September, is it? What's happening in September? Sugar beets isn't until October. I don't think we have anything in September, actually. Uh, we probably have some fertilizing on the... Uh, on the uh, grass, or did we already do the fertilizing? Actually, we could do the fertilizing right now. Never mind. Let's grab you and get some fertilizing done. The Bethesda games development cycle. I mean, it's the development cycle for a lot of games, to be fair. Why why waste your money and your resources for something that you know that the uh, general audience is going to fix for you or, you know, do for you or whatever? It's, it's just good business, I guess, at that point. Now, granted, you do have to give your, your uh, audience the tools to do what they need to do, right? You still have to have the tools available for them to do the modding. Um, so that's still very important, but you know, that should be, that's, that's pretty lightweight. You know, just giving the tools available is pretty lightweight compared to the actual modding itself. Plus, honestly, the creativity of what? I mean, 50, 100 developers, you know, designers, artists, whatever. The creativity of that number versus the creativity of 
tens of thousands of people who actually buy the game, hundreds of thousands of people buy the game. There's no comparison. You're just, you're limited, not just on money, but on just overall creativity and, and whatever. So yeah, it's just, it's smart business to allow modding in video games because it just means your video game can become, can become that much better. I mean, go look at, what's a game that I've looked at recently? Um, colonization, Sid Meier's Colonization. There are multiple mods that have extended the life of that game. And there are people that are very passionate about those mods. And, um, you know, modding can absolutely, you know, just extend the lifetime and the, the value of a game well beyond what the developers even imagined in the first place. So having a good foundation for modding is the most important thing I think a developer for a video game can do because, you know, you, you just make that game worth that much more for that much longer. Hey, Pixel, uh, Pixel Lady Suits, how's it going? Glad you could join. And yeah, I'm doing some uh, some Elm Creek. Elm Creek's probably my favorite map. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't tried some. I haven't tried many of the modded maps. To be fair, and I've heard some good things about some of the modded maps. But uh, of the base game maps, maps, I think this is probably my favorite. Although I do like the Zalanka map a lot because I love the fact that the land is very cheap to buy. <laughs> that makes it so much easier. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Zalanka is pretty cool. Yeah, good for licensing issues. That is a good point. Um, I haven't tried the Star Wars mod. There's a Star Wars mod for XCOM too. I have not tried that. That sounds actually pretty cool. I've tried the one where I haven't tried, but I've seen the one for Stellaris. Uh, I think I've actually seen a Star Trek one for Stellaris as well, right? There's one for Star Wars and Star Trek. Am I wrong? Am I making that up? I feel like I've seen both of those. But um, a Star Wars mod for XCOM does sound really cool. I, I'll have to go look that up. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that if you can avoid most licensing issues because the, the modders are not making money off of it usually so there's not really a licensing issue most of the time plus it's really cool that you know it's valuable for the modders as well to make mods because it helps them build up a portfolio and if you make a good enough mod you know, either the developer of the of the game buys the mod from you or buys your services or just hires you straight out. And there's been plenty of people who've gotten jobs at game development companies just because they simply made a really cool mod. It is a very, very good way to get into a business, uh, get, in, get, in, get your foot in the door in a gaming company. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought I'd seen the Star Trek mod for Star Stars. I thought it was pretty detailed as well, but I just hadn't seen the Star Wars one. I mean, it makes sense that it'd be a Star Wars one as well, because I mean, it's just logical <laughs> at that point. I remember playing a uh, a really cool Lord of the Rings mod for. Oh, what was that game? Oh, man. I'm going to forget the name of the game now. Man. It's been around forever. I think they've got multiple versions of it, but I just don't remember the name. It's, it's one where you, you can, like, ride around on horseback, like, as a knight, or you can sword fight, stuff like that. It's on, like, a map. Oh, man. I'm just describing it so poorly. I forget the name of it now. Oh, uh, Mount, Mountain Blade. Mountain Blade. That was a game that came out a long time ago. I think they've got a, they've obviously got a second one now. I remember playing a Lord of the Rings version of that. It was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun with that one back in the day. I mean, any of those big franchises, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Star Trek, anything like that, you can get put into a video game as a mod. It's always going to be, almost always going to be pretty popular. And sadly, a lot of times those mods are better than any licensed game in that genre that's ever come out, you know? It's just, it's kind of silly, but 
it's sad when the best, you know, quote unquote Star Wars game or Star Trek game, or whatever, is, is a mod for another video game. Hey Tucker, how's it going? All right, almost done with the harvest here. And then we already got the fertilizing done. So really we're just fast forwarding to October to be able to harvest our sugar beets. Wishing we could buy this thing. Sad that we can't. <laughs> it would be nice. Let's see, let's check that T560. What 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 size uh what size header could that thing have? 7.6 meter. Hmm. It's actually not that much bigger than than what we have, is it? I think ours is six meter. That was a 5.1. Well, it's fifty percent larger. It would be better. It would be nicer, but it's for that price. Here's what it comes down to. Could I buy this, even the used one, right? I could go buy the used one for 176,000 bucks and get a header that is 50% larger than the one we got. Will it be faster? Sure, it'll be a little bit faster. But for less than that price, I could also just do this. I could come over here, buy another one of these for less than half the price with another six meter header. And now we're twice as fast for less than half the price. So. There does become a point where it's like, it's probably just better to buy a second har harvester than it is to buy a bigger harvester. The, the, within reason, right? If you get one of the really big ones, that has got like a 20 meter header or something like that. Maybe that's different, but even those though, are so expensive. So our best bet would be just to get a nice cheap second header. That's, you know, not very big, but we can run two at a time. Forge wagon. We're not really going to need this for anything anytime soon. Um, I mean, it could become valuable for our cows if we decide to do that, but not necessarily. We, we can keep doing the, the bailing. All right. Um, I guess we'll get you ready to go pick up the last of it. Chickens are already full. Already. All right, fine. We'll take over. I got nothing else to do. Might as well do the harvesting myself. It's the power of the economy. You sometimes shoot numbers. Yeah, that way I'm getting a bunch of single spot. Yeah, hundred percent. It's. Because those harvesters are so ridiculously expensive, they're just the value. It, it becomes a limited value. I mean, at some point, if you've got enough money, yeah, go for it. But if you've got enough workers, then there's no reason not to do multiple. I guess that's where the balance is. Worker cost versus uh, harvester cost. Now, we're, we, we get two free workers right now, which is why there's some incentive for us to uh, just to double up. Although, admittedly, I don't have a way to pay for the third worker, so I am literally limited to just two workers, period. I can't actually do more than two workers at a time. Unless I uh, figure something else out for that. I don't know. Hey, Valentin. How's it going?
<laughs> you know, not many times you would trust it to three, three independent tests. That's kind of funny, actually. True, but kind of funny. Oh, well, I'm glad you, glad you found me. Other than the handful of times that I've been sick, I, I try to stream every Wednesday night around this time for Farming Simulator. I say that as I'm actually sick right now, but well enough that I can still do this. <laughs> um, yeah. I was going to start tonight's stream with uh, playing a little bit of the uh, Farming Simulator Kids game just to kind of show it off and just see what it's about. Because it's, it's the kind of game that my kids would probably want to play and I wouldn't mind trying it out just to see what it looks like. But I didn't want to pay like it's like three dollars on Google Play. And I think at the Apple Store as well. It's like three dollars, three dollars and fifty cents, something like that. Right. So I'm like, OK, whatever. That's that's a really cheap game, whatever. But I was going to do it on the Switch because I thought that would be easier to um, to uh, set up for the recording. And it's like 30 bucks for the Switch. And I'm like, wait a minute. Are we talking about the same game? It's three dollars for the cell phone and thirty dollars for the switch please tell me there's something different about the game <laughs> like that seems insane oh you found my channel a couple months back well i'm glad you were able to join for a live stream thank you i mean i'm still probably gonna get the game for my kids but i gotta i gotta figure out how to justify thirty dollars for a game that i'm just gonna try out for like five seconds and then throw it over to them <laughs> plus i gotta figure out how to set up the switch on the uh recording i've never actually i mean i know i can do it i just haven't actually done it yet okay i mean i guess so i mean it just seems insane that nintendo the cost for nintendo is going to be 10 times the value or the, the amount that both google and apple are going to you know charge you to have it on hosted on theirs i mean i get that the switch being a gaming device is probably it probably is easier to use maybe I, I don't know it just seems insane it seems so weird i mean truth be told i would have been less bothered if the google play version was like 20 bucks or something like that I'm like okay whatever 20 bucks for google play 30 bucks for switch yeah, i get it. it's fine whatever no big deal <laughs> three dollars versus thirty dollars come on now that's insane <laughs> little weird but oh well all right so we're good there I'm going to get you parked over here so you're ready to drop off. I might just do like a recorded tr let's try of the of the game just to kind of kind of see what it's about. I mean, I doubt very many people on the channel are going to go watch me play Farming Simulator Kids, but enough people on the channel probably have kids that watch the channel might have kids that they might be still be interested so i figured it might be valuable in some context all right get you ready to go um do we need to get eggs uh, we probably should pick up some eggs and then we can fast forward how's our you know i just thought about how's our bakery doing on flour because if our bakery is too full, we might need to start spitting out. Now nah, it's got plenty of room for flour. I have a feeling my kids will actually... I was, I was watching a little bit of trailer of the game. It looks very simple, obviously, for obvious reasons. And it might be a hair too young for my kids in one sense, but I actually think they'd still enjoy it a lot. I'm probably still going to get it for them because, you know, I spoil my kids all the time. Um, I wish it was on like, like the Xbox Game Pass or something like that. That'd be cool. Alrighty. Uh, anything else I need to do? Uh, how are we doing on a bread? Okay, we're okay on bread. All right, let's fast forward to September. I think September is going to be a dead month for us. So we'll just probably... Just check things and then skip along. 
Mobile, mar mobile marketplaces are open by design. A bespoke game marketplace like the console can and do treat individual games to as and publish it differently. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Um, just, just seems interesting to see the difference there. Alrighty. Um, I'd be interesting to see how many they sell on Switch versus the other platforms when it's available on the other platforms for such a small you know, dollar amount. I would be shocked if they sold very many on the Switch at all. Oh, it's potatoes. I was like, I was getting excited for a second there. I was like, oh, please tell me that's sugar beets, but it's potatoes. Uh, it's not going to work for us. So sad. Oh, well. Um, And of course, they're going to throw another harvester in our face. I mean, if it was the harvester that we have right now for half price, oh, I would buy that in a heartbeat. 40,000 bucks, something like that. I would buy that in a heartbeat. <laughs> But no, it's the wrong one. I don't think there's anything for us to do today. Uh, we don't have to do the water, anything with the water. Chickens are going to be fine. So I think we're just immediately fast forwarding to October. October is going to be a mowing month as well as a sugar beet month. Finally get our sugar beets going. The new, new what's dropping on May 31st? New what? Wait, what? The new F1 game? F124, okay, cool. I've tried, I, I I did buy the F1 and uh, was it 22 a couple years ago? And I play, I bought F122, I think, I think it was 22. I think I sat down and I played like, I was playing like 10 hours a day for like a week straight or something insane. Like I could not stop playing that game. I had a lot of fun with that game. Um, now I've never featured any of the F1 games, uh, the actual F1 games. I featured F1 Manager, obviously, on the channel, but I've never featured F1 themselves. Mostly because I do like racing games, and I'm pretty good at racing games, but I feel like there's plenty of really good people about racing games on, on YouTube, and I just don't know if that's a market that I would really be able to jump into. <laughs> it's not like a strategy game. I feel like a strategy game, I can, you know, I, I could compete with the best of them, but, you know, a racing game, there's some, there's some pretty ridiculous guys out there that play racing games, so... They have full setups and everything. I did three seasons of potatoes on Elm Creek uh, with that toad harvester. I would just recommend to save and get the self-propelled. I like the self-propelled. Uh, you're not wrong. I do prefer the self-propelled usually. Um, although I will say that the sugar beet one, I mean, it's, it works. It's the frustrating thing about the sugar beet harvester or any of the potato or sugar beet harvesters is that they just have such a small capacity. You feel like you're emptying them out every other pass. I was having to me the night I played around six hours and didn't feel like my hand. Oh no, no. My hands were, yeah, I was playing so much that my hands were like, when I finally let go of the controller, like I could feel my hands were just in that form around the controller. <laughs> it was like, uh, I should probably not be playing this game this much. It was, I was having so much fun with that game though. It was good. <laughs> Get you going. Um, we need to let's go ahead and empty out for the chickens for a second, and then we gotta go get our sugar beet stuff. All right, we have to drop off the front weight here because we will need to pick up the, um, uh, we'll need to pick up the, uh, front bit for the harvester. Or did I already buy that? I should probably drive over there. I thought I bought something recently, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking about a different save. Okay. Let's drop the weight here. Let's go, go to the store, grab the harvester for the sugar beets. Got a potato planter. Nice trailer. It's quite a bit bigger than the one we got. 
That's a nice... That's actually a pretty good harvester there. Um, too bad we... Still more than we need. We don't... I mean, it's a good one. It, it would work and we get the job done, but... Still more than we need right now. Yeah. We just can't afford it right now. Not with having to do the sugar beets as well. Hey, Stormy. How's it going? I'm a dream the Suzuka circuit with three virtual safety cars. <laughs> Hey, Salsa Mix, how's it going for you as well? Everybody's joining today. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, I think I played at least three seasons before I stopped. Like, I just couldn't stop playing that F1 game. It was so funny. Um, Let's see. What do we need? We need the sugar beet stuff. Sugar beet stuff. All right, so we need the front and we need the back. So we got enough for this. We just don't have enough for the sugar. Uh, So the sugar mill, I should say. The uh, You know what I'm trying to say. The uh, sugar plant, whatever it's called. <laughs> All right, we'll grab you. And we will grab you. And that'll get us what we need. Too bad the sugar beets don't harvest at the same time as the um, sorghum, because then we could run both harvesters at the same time. Yeah, we won't be able to buy the sugar, um, sugar mill, <laughs> whatever it's called. <laughs> it's going to bug me. This I'm saying the wrong thing. Uh, we're not going to be able to buy that until we sell stuff. Although I was thinking about selling stuff in October just so we would have enough money because I don't have anywhere to put it, right? I don't have anywhere to store the sugar beets at the moment. Uh, good on you. You need this T440 multi harvest back. I do have the T440 multi-harvester back. Um, if I were to go look at this, I can go... And I probably didn't grab the one. Oh, I don't have it turned on here. Or do I? No, I don't have it turned on. I have it turned on for my Zalanka run, but I do have it downloaded. I just forgot to turn it on for this. But it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I don't mind the sugar beet stuff as much. Uh, I would use it for the other vegetables, because obviously we, I don't like the vegetable... The other vegetable equipment is the only reason I even have that pack because the ones for carrots and and um, red beets and uh, parsnips, I just don't like that equipment at all. So I definitely prefer using this equipment for that stuff. So I'll go around. But yeah, I have that pack. That pack's really good. It really, uh, it's not just for the T440. It uses It's for all the equipment. It makes all the equipment multi-fruit, which is really good. Suzuka is... Okay, it's my first season. I'm on the 19 or 18 race of the season. Suzuka 17, Texas is 18. Oh, okay. I think I'm a couple of race to finish. I'm done with the first season. I'm on race 20 in Mexico. Oh, everybody's talking about F1. I was like, I think we're talking about F1. I'm pretty sure we are. Suzuka. Night, new update today. Nothing Qatar. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with everybody's talking about. No, it's cool. No, yeah. The F1 stuff is I just it's a good game. Solid, solid game. All right, we are, it is ready to harvest, right? Yeah, remove foliage. <laughs> I don't know why I thought, thought it looked differently when it was ready to harvest, but I guess it is definitely, yeah, ready to harvest. Cool. I, I wish, uh, I don't remember, I think they had track days around the, uh, the Texas, the, uh, the track there in Austin. I used to, I wanted to take my car around the track there in Austin back when I had my Mustang. I thought it'd be kind of fun to just to drive around in uh, an F1 track, but I don't know why we, I, th I think we looked it up, but I don't remember why we never did it. Me and my buddy, he had a Camaro and I had a Mustang. We were going to go take our cars around and go zip it around a Formula One track, but I don't remember what the, what the logistics were or something. Something came up and we just never did it, got, got around to doing it. I know that people can take their cars around track days on the, what is it, the Nürburgring, right? Uh, the track there in Germany. I've seen people do that. It's pretty cool. All right, I got that going. Um, make sure you're empty so I can park you somewhere.
Okay. I'm 100% focused on the game because I'm rookie reserve in a tournament on TikTok. I'm trying to push myself without assist. Oh, nice. Racing a Mustang. Track is a good call. Otherwise, it'd be too many crowds to hit. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. No, yeah, yeah. Fair for sure. I never took my Mustang to a cars and coffee event or anything crazy like that. I think the only reason the Mustang gets a bad name is because it's it's accessible, right? It's a it's a car that a lot of people can get. So therefore, if a lot of people can get said car, then a lot of stupid people can get said car. <laughs> and so therefore, you're going to see that on a lot of stupid TikTok or YouTube videos. So I mean, I've seen a fair number of other like very expensive vehicles on some uh on some stuff like that too, right? I mean, how many times have I seen a uh, a news article about the guy that just bought a brand new, you know, Ferrari and crashes it same day, you know? <laughs> Other people crash their vehicles too. There's just less of them. Because everybody is stupid at some point in time. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Not everybody, but there's enough stupid people in the world. Um, okay, so we actually need to get a new trailer. Um, I did grab a mod for... Where is it? It's not there. Mm, is it under here? Is it just under trailers? I think it's this one. Uh, no. Do I have it at the end or something? Is, ah, it's that one. Yeah, there we go. It's got the, uh, it's got the ability to make the, um, chopped sugar beet cutter, right? So I grabbed this one. Uh, I think actually Stormy's the one that recommended this one. Uh, Makes sense to me, because why not? I mean, it seems silly to have to use that other device to make chopped sugar beets. So I like the fact that this is all attached here. To me, this seems like a logical, realistic type of thing. So uh, I went ahead and grabbed that. Now we are a little bit short on money for this right now. And again, we don't have anywhere to put this stuff is the problem. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna solve that problem. <laughs> um, I guess we're selling all of our stuff early. It's not ideal. Um, what's the price for eggs right now? It's not good, but we need some money. And then we need to sell the eggs and we need to sell the bread to get some money coming in here. In my country, the most successful car is a uh, Dacia manufacturer, if you know this of this. It was a super Camaro, but somehow only one of them is called the crowd sweeper. <laughs> there's a pack of trailers with augers on them to, uh, that all do the sugar beet chopping automatically. It's, oh, there's some auger trailer. That makes sense too. They have some with the auger built in. All right, let me let me um. Hmm. I guess I'll just grab you. I was gonna grab our faster tractor, but let me just grab you. We'll run you up with the eggs. See if we can get enough sold to buy the trailer. It's not ideal, but got to do what we got to do. Silo is only 5,000 bucks. What silo? Is it a mod? Cause I don't, I might not have that mod then. And I don't know if any silos that hold sugar beets. So it has to be a mod. Cause I don't, I don't think any of the silos I have have sugar beets. Unless it's one that's on the ground. Is it one of those ground ones that I'm not familiar with? No, these are all just chaff. I thought there was a ground one at one point, and I don't remember. I don't remember what it looked like. I think there is one that you can put on the ground that you can just dump 
sugar beets and potatoes and stuff like that in. I mean, I can't dump them in the, uh, in the, uh, train station, right? So I can go dump them in the train station for now. And, um, which is fine. We can do that. I still need the trailer. So I still am going to go ahead and probably go sell the eggs. Uh, which place was it was better? Uh, eggs. Currently the bakery, but it's actually my bakery. So that's not going to be helpful. I guess we'll go to the farmer's market. Yeah, I mean, I could always just dump them in the train silo. I could also just sell the first batch of sugar beets just to get a little bit extra money for that and not bother with sugar until we get the next cycle. That would work. Community train station. Yep. <laughs> yep. Random question. I've never tried multiplayer. Not, 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 I've never tried multiplayer where I'm playing with other people with different farms. I've obviously played multiplayer with a buddy where we were working the same farm. But if you have different farms, do you just, once you dump it in the train station, is it just community at that point? <laughs> like, I'm assuming you, like, anybody could have access to it at that point. Is that how that works? We're not going to buy the sugar mill now. We could always, we could just wait on the, uh, the bread for a little bit longer. To be fair, when I did my math on how much money we would need for the sugar mill, I did not take into account the trailer. Um... Alternatively, we could sell the bread and the eggs now and then just go ahead and get the sugar mill, cycle the first cycle without chopping it, and then um, worry about chopping it later once we can afford the trailer. That actually might be a, another reasonably good option as well. So I think if we sell the bread and the sh eggs now, we should have enough for the, uh, for the mill. We almost have enough just from the eggs. So I think it's 90, isn't it? Sugar mill is... Oh, it's 80. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, it's... Hmm. That's interesting. What do you think about that for a minute? <laughs> is it better to get the sugar mill now and save up for the trailer later or more efficiency later? Or is it better just to get the efficiency now? And sure... Yeah, it's probably better to get the sugar mill now, right? The inc price increase for sugar... It's just going to be a lot better than just selling raw sugar beets, I think. The only problem that I will have then is that I don't have a way to drop off the sugar beets because I don't have an empty trailer right now. But we can uh, work around that. It's slower, but I could just drive the tractor over there to drop off.
Unless I thought I was going to get 51,000 bucks from the bread, but I don't think I'm getting 51,000 bucks from the bread. Oh, yeah. Sugar meal with a... With cut sugar beets is really good, but I can't afford both right now. So which one, which one's better? Getting sugar beets that I just go sell sugar beets or getting the, the sugar and then worrying about the cuts later? I think the sugar mill's better. So at least we'll get some value increase. And we only got to wait till like next. We wait till actually, honestly, selling the silage in January will get us enough money for the trailer. You do want that curtain slider with auto load. Oh, yeah, yeah. To try and manage it. The number of pellets. Yeah, it does produce a lot of sugar. You're correct. Trailer TARDIS XL. Loading capacity 150,000 to 200,000 liters. Price 15,500 bucks. Not familiar with that. Trailer TARDIS XL. I'm assuming that's a mod and salsa mix. we got in here at the moment actually it's full i should have emptied it out sooner <laughs> oops thought i checked last month maybe i checked the month before in the mod up yeah okay I'm, i can always look at that as well Come on, spit it out. Let's go. Where's this bakery? It only has two spots. A little strange, but it's whatever. Is there at least one more? Uh, no. I don't think there's one more yet. It's about to be. Let's drop you off for now. That's 20,000 liters, though. So at the current price of bread, that is 30,000 bucks, a little bit more. It's not bad. Um, And let's come over here and pick up all this stuff. Get it cleaned up, because we're probably putting the sugar mill over here somewhere. Let me just get all this junk picked up. Uh, make sure I'm doing... Um, yeah, any. Not sure we're gonna use all of this stuff. Need to uh not sure what we're gonna do with the solid fertilizer actually. It's not really useful to us at the moment. Alright, that is done. Let's figure out where we're gonna drop this bad boy. Um 
I might want to move that stuff out of the way as well. Just in case I want to bump it up against the wall there. Put this on this wall. It'll be fine. Use the trailer for storage and save back. Go back when you're done. Just tonight. Oh, yeah, that's fair as well. Could do that. Although, I think we're going to get more than that. Well, the current trailer's old. I don't know about the trailer you're talking about. How much that... Really? Did we get stuck? Really? There we go. Wait, come on. <laughs> what are you stuck on? I see the pipe over there, but why are you stuck? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's stuck in the wall. <laughs> oh, it's annoying. Can I, like, crash into you, move you? <laughs> it is literally stuck in that wall, isn't it? Come on. Nope. All right. Well, we might have to reset that. That's annoying. We'll lose a little bit of seed and fertilizer. I forgot that this thing does use the fertilizer, so I guess we do have a use for the fertilizer. Huh. Let me try and knock it from this way over here. If not, I'll just reset it. Nope. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nope. All right. Fine. Fine. I don't know what it got stuck on. It's a little... That's the that's some farming simulator physics for you right there. <laughs> a drain pipe is stronger than however many tons this thing weighs. That's awesome. That's just great. All right. Well, we'll reset that real quick. That way it's out of the way. Come on. Am I, am I, I'm, probably, I'm probably in the way, aren't I? There we go. All right. Reset that. No worries. Um, all right. Let's go and build our sugar mill. Production factories. Sugar mill. All right. Not enough money. How's that? I don't I have 80,000 bucks. I mean, I'm not going to have to clear that much land, right? Okay. It's just, it was just resetting itself because it was, sometimes it calculates and then when you move it, it doesn't recalculate for some reason. Um, where's the, where's the output? on the left okay i was gonna say i was like i thought it was over here on this left but it wasn't showing up when i had it right here for some reason i mean do i care about the output i mean i can always just sell straight from here but i probably do want the output so probably if anything we're gonna flip it around this way i have the output back there and i should be able to still back up the trailer there and drop it off or i can even flip it around this way I kind of like it this way. I'm just... As long as I have room to back up the trailer to drop stuff off, I should be alright. Which I think I will there. Alright, it's doing that not enough money thing again. Alright, well I know where I want to put it. And we know we have enough money, it's just being goofy. All right, something like that's probably good enough. I'm probably going to find out a reason why I don't like it here, but we're going to go with it. I mean, it couldn't be... Oh, I'm not going to be able to... I can, get, I can spin that weight around. We can get... Or we can reset it. One of the two. But now that works. I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, and we can just back up right here. Drop off. Should be fine. Keeps it compact and allows the space to put stuff. All right. I'm okay with that. All righty. You. We've just been sitting here. I guess we're going to... Although you're... Hmm. be a little harder to back this up. <laughs> this is a little spout sticking out there. Well, we could go sell some bread to get some money for a trailer. I don't think we're going to be able to get the trailer we want. But we could get a little cheap trailer. Uh, let's see how much I 
I mean, this thing's completely full, right? Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's just sell the bread. Not a trailer available on the used market, was there? Oh, there was. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, we can grab that trailer. It's a nice little trailer. And obviously holds a lot of stuff. And that'll at least be something for now. And then we can sell that back later or sell that other trailer back later uh, and buy the uh, sugar beet cutter. All right, we'll lose a little bit of money on the bread, but not a lot, honestly. Once we, if we start processing sugar, we'll make that money back. I guess is my point. Um, the market, good. That's yeah, very close. Good stuff there. Just can cut sugar beets and uh, just sugar beets by themselves. Yeah, it's two to one there, and then it's five to three. And I think it's I think you get double right for sh cut sugar beets. Am I remembering right? It's been a while since I've done the cut sugar beets. To be honest. Or maybe it's maybe it's the same amount of cut sugar beets. It's just cut, so you get it more efficient. So it's not a significant difference, to be honest, between the two, either way. So we'll be cut. We'll be okay with the uh, sugar beets straight up, and then we can cut them later. Alrighty, let's grab you. I mean, I don't really like the color, but it's kind of a temporary thing anyway, so I don't... I mean, we could change it, but it's not really worth it. We'll grab what, what color it is, and then give us all the more incentive to sell it back later if we don't like it. It's a very large trailer. I don't think I've ever had this trailer before.
I mean, I usually stick with a certain set of subset of trailers all the time, and I never really try any of the other ones. Oh, you know, I just realized. Oh, I just realized something. I think this trailer is too tall, isn't it? I think this trailer is too tall. Hmm. I'm 90% sure this trailer is too tall. <laughs> I have not checked out the Elm Creek 2K24 yet. I mean, I, I looked it up briefly the other day. Uh, I think when you, whenever you mentioned it the first time. Um, but I haven't actually installed it or anything like that. I, I did look at the, the pictures and stuff. I think this is too tall. Which is annoying. It's hard to tell. Maybe not. Okay, we're good. I think we're just barely good. Yeah, we're fine. I'll get you a little closer. <laughs> there we go. All right, just it looked it looked like it was going to be close, and it is close. <laughs> it's very close, but we are good. Gonna drop drop off this little load just so we can get the sugar beets started processing. That was close though. That looked that looked like that was gonna be just a smidge too tall. Glad it wasn't. So sugar beets go. <sighs> Should make us a good chunk of uh, sugar. Obviously, once we get the rest of it harvested. Um, I mean, part of me is tempted just to sell it straight from here, but I guess we'll we'll deliver it. What is the best place to sell sugar? Uh, where's that? It's down here. Probably missed it, didn't I? There it is. Looks like August is the best month, and I mean, there's several places to sell, so it could be anywhere. Cool. Alrighty. Well, that is that. I mean, we got sugar now, guys. All we got left to do is get um, get cows. We've got to save up our money and get some cows. Of course, the cows are doing double duty, right? They're going to eat both milk and, uh, it's kind of like close enough. Why is that not working? I'm confused why it's not working. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, yeah, cows are going to do, uh, milk and, uh, butter for us. The one th bad thing about the sugar beet, this little tiny sugar beet 
harvester. We have to empty it out every single row, basically. But that just proves how many sugar beets you get. You get a lot of sugar beets off a field this size. And this harvest might take us the rest of the stream. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna go for a while. Um We already did the mowing. Which I guess, you know what else we need to do? We need to do, uh, we need to go ahead and windrow and do the bailing. So we'll go ahead and get that rolling. Big old pile of grass. Alrighty, so what is next? Like what how much how much are we talking here? I mean we're gonna go with the smallest cow pin, right? Or not the smallest, but the one that's the smallest bar barn that has actual you know enclosure here. So we're gonna go with this one. So that's two hundred and fifty thousand bucks. And then forty five cows. I forget how much they cost. Are they like a thousand a piece or a little bit less than that? Actually, I think the baby cows are less than that. I don't know if I want to go with baby cows, though. We're not worried about reproduction. We're just worried about getting milk. So we might go with older cows that can produce milk quicker. So I think it's about a thousand bucks a piece. 800 bucks a piece, something like that. So let's let's call it a thousand. If it's less than that, awesome. That's another 45,000 bucks. So that's putting us right at 300 grand. And then... I mean, at the very bare minimum, we need a, a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? We need one of these. So at the very bare minimum, we need one of these. Oh, uh, so that's another 40,000, 45,000 bucks if we go with that smaller one. Let's say 50,000 bucks. So we're talking 350,000 bucks to get cows up and running. Is there anything else we need for cows? I mean, eventually we want to get the manure. Doesn't have to be done day one. Eventually, that's actually really the only thing, right? The manure pit. 350. Oh, that's right. We we're going to buy the land, I think. We we're going to put them over in this little spot over here, weren't we? So we would want to buy this as well, which is 56. So that's 400 grand. We're talking like right at 400 grand. Just maybe a hair, hair over. It's <laughs> a lot of money. I'll take a couple more cycles of all of these pr uh, products to get to 400 grand. But again, that is the last thing we need. Um, we will need the dairy though, as well. Eventually we can start by just selling milk. Um, until we can get enough money for the dairy. So the dairy doesn't need to be done day one, but eventually we will need the dairy in order to get the butter for the, uh, for the cake. Uh, trailer for the milk. That's true. That's true. Um, which we don't need right away. We can wait, but that doesn't have to be like day one. Um, but yeah, eventually we'll need a trailer for the milk. Not honestly, it doesn't have to be anything crazy big. We can go with this one if we wanted to. Um, can we fit? Um, there's that dairy. Is there? There's two dairies, aren't there? Yeah, there's that one. I think that one's a bigger uh, footprint wise. Can we fit this one? Hmm. Oh, almost. We might, we might be able to squeeze it in here, right? Barely. I mean, obviously I have to have a little opening to be able to back up for the sugar. We could just about, as long as there's enough wide enough width for the sugar guy. Hmm. I don't know. There might be a place over here. Uh, there also might be a place over here by the cows, actually, come to think of it. This this is actually a pretty big piece of land. 
we should be able to have enough money to put the bakery, the dairy over here and the cows. And if we do the dairy right next to us, then we don't need the, we don't need the semi truck, uh, trailer, right? We don't need the, uh, the fancy trailer and get a semi truck for it. We can just get by with this little, um, little dinky one, uh, right there, which can be pulled with our tractors. So that would be fine. That's only 25,000 bucks. Okay. It's a long ways to go. We're, 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 we got a ways to go before we get there, but. It's not impossibly far away. Probably two years. Probably two full cycles at least. Maybe three. Now that we're getting sugar though as well. I mean, it does increase a little bit of how much we're getting per... Obviously, we don't come in at the right angle. We are too too short. Alright, here we go. Can we raise that thing? I don't think so. No. Sometimes you can raise the arms and stuff like that. We're making progress. We're, yeah, we're ways away, but we are, I mean, we're checking one more item off our list as of right now with the sugar. So it's pretty cool. Do I nail the game North card? I actually own the game North card. I've played it a couple times. Not, not very much. I'll be honest, but I have played it. So yes, I am, I'm familiar with the game North card. It's been a while since I played it. Although when I played Northgard, it was because me and my buddies were trying to find a game that we could play together. And so I think we, we, it, was, it was three of us together. And so we saw Northgard. So we tried it out for a bit and it was fun. It was fun to play as a multiplayer game. I don't know if I've ever played it as a single player game, though. And admittedly, I'm more into strategy games than my buddies are, so... There might have been a little bit of a, uh, I'm having fun, but they're not. So therefore I'm not having fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I could be enjoying a game, but if the guys I'm playing with aren't enjoying the game, then I'm not going to enjoy the game. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so. Omatana mobs. I I will admit I don't tend to buy mod get mods, um, that are uh, that solve a purpose that I already have in game. Like for example, the sh the sugar beet cutter, I wanted to grab that mod because the solution in game is just not a very good solution, quite frankly. Um, but if there's already a trailer for milk in game, I'm probably not going to buy a mod get, or not buy a mod. You know what I mean? I'm probably not going to get a mod for a, a milk trailer when there's already. a two perfectly good milk trailers in game. pile is so high I have to go very slow <laughs> it's kind of funny
Oh, you know what else we'll need for the cows? We need a tether. I just forgot about that. Because we'll have to turn some of this grass into hay. Tethers are pretty cheap, though. We should be able to get that relatively inexpensively. I was going to say, I bet you're already full, and I just didn't miss the message, didn't I? <laughs> I was like, I feel like it's been long enough. He, he fills up really fast. Try not to crash into the trailer this time. You do get a lot of sugar beets off of these fields, though. I mean, to be perfectly honest, that one field of sugar beets. Um, like we could, we could, we could switch that over to sorghum for the next couple seasons, because you don't, with sugar, you don't tend to actually need it every single season. You just make so much of it. But we'll just sell the excess. Assuming it can even produce enough. Uh, I don't know how how fast does it produce. Twelve thousand cycles per month, so it processes twenty. Oh, it'll be fine. Yeah, it should be. It should be able to get through everything. It's one hundred forty-four thousand liters of sugar beets a year, right? Oh, more than that. Sorry, two hundred eighty-eight thousand. I don't know why I thought it was less than that, though. A little bit of a header down here so it has a little bit more room. How much does it how much does it think we're gonna get? Um, 
that it usually tells you how much potential you have, like monetary, like number numerically. I'm not seeing it. Maybe it doesn't work for sugar beets because you have to take the foliage off the top. That seems weird. Cake sure take a lot of ingredients. <laughs> you know, we've got what six? One, two, three. We got four of the six ingredients. So <laughs> it's a lot. one more or two more rows maybe because I just want to make sure you have plenty of room to turn around just can't, can't drive straight apparently all right get you going there Alrighty, we might actually fast forward to next month and finish the sugar beet harvest then, just because um, we'll, we'll still need to do some fertilizing on that grass field anyway, so it gives us a little bit of multitasking ability. Hey Shane, how's it going? Glad you could join. Oh, I did it again. Went too fast. Push back.
Used to get on my farm, you seem like 22 map. Uh, got 1,000 chickens and 6 sheep. Nice. Very, very nice. Should be good there. Yeah, arguably chickens would be a better use of our sorghum than turning it into wheat or turning it into flour and then turning it into bread. But we're going to need the flour anyway. So it seemed like a good thing to do, but I could have just done double chickens and made a lot more money that way as well. Haven't done sheep on a save yet, so at some point I might do some sheep. Or horses. I haven't done horses either. Up, see you later, salsa mix. Thanks for thanks for coming by. Had a wheat harvest, and I made too much for my chickens on one side, and then I had barley and everything made seven hundred sixty. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And thanks for the mod suggestions. I will at least look at those up and see what they look like. Oh, man. This trailer that holds 30 some odd thousand liters of stuff. <laughs> Actually, just about got it full, don't we? You get a lot of sugar beets. A lot of sugar beets. A little bit of a header there as well. We should be good. I don't know if I'm going to get another full bail or not. Eh. I might if I got every bit of this sc scraggly bits. But I'm not that worried about it. Good thing about those scraggly bits is they'll be there the next time we windrow. I have a feeling I need to go empty out this sugar beet trailer.
What's this thing hold? 37,000. Yeah, we'll go empty out real quick. <laughs> this thing is struggling to back up. I'd like to do the chickens are cheap because they are cheap and affordable to do and yeah low maintenance for sure because uh what sheep are just grass and then chickens of course are just grain i haven't done sheep i think it's just grass right so very low maintenance for sure well i guess i've done sheep in the multiplayer game but i honestly don't remember what they took i think it was just grass all right let's see if that's enough for you to get Go on to the other direction. Oh, some of them take water. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Water's pretty easy, obviously, to get. And usually, uh, depending on which one you get, it's either auto-filling and you just pay for it, or, I mean, even if you have to fill it yourself, it's not too bad. Alrighty. Go pick up our bales, and then all we got to do left is wait for this harvest to finish but like i said we could fast forward and just finish the harvest next month How much money did we make off of the uh, eggs? That was this month? Okay, that was this month. Okay, so we made 66000 off the eggs and the bread, plus the 8000 So 74000 bucks, and we sold it a little bit early. So we probably make, we probably make a good 90000 bucks off those two combined. Okay. And I know we make a pretty decent chunk off the bales. Was it like thirty thousand bucks off the bales, something like that? Um, I think it's around one hundred twenty thousand bucks. And now we've got sugar. That's probably two two full harvests. It's going to get us really close to being able to get the cows.
is work worth it for cows. I mean, cows is one of my favorite animals to do. Just because I like the extra little bits of inputs besides... I mean, don't get me wrong. Chickens, having one input. Sheep, having one input. All well, those are, you know, nice and easy to do. But I like the little bit of extra that you get to do for the cows. And to be fair, they only need two, you know, two crops, right? They need straw. So some sort of grain crop for straw. And then they need grass. But they just need grass done two different ways, right? They need silage and hay. So... You can basically still still very minimal equipment to get cows going. Um, the most expensive part of the cows is the, the pen itself, right? Um, and milk milk sells pretty decently, you know. And if you are actually taking the time to breed the cows and sell the cows when they're adults, it's a good way to get a little bit of extra income as that way as well. Especially on the hard uh, difficulty, and the reason I say that is because on hard difficulty. The milk sells for less compared to normal or easy difficulty. However, cows sell for the same amount. So the value of a cow versus how much milk you get from a cow is actually increased on hard difficulty. Because even though the economy for all the, cro all the production stuff is less on hard difficulty... Uh, for some reason, all the animals sell for the same amount. Yeah, cows, once you get them rolling, they have a very... The effort is relatively low, and the money is pretty good. Always been one of my favorites to do, for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. It just, just works. It does good stuff. Yeah, uh, chickens and cows go really well together because uh, exactly what you just said. You can get the grain itself for the chickens and then the straw for the cows. And that's just a really good, really good combo for sure.
All right, all that's picked up. Good to go. A wheat field for $177,000 and flip the field. Yeah, I mean, if you make some money off it, they can sell it back. That's pretty good. Let's go get this trailer picked up. He made 580,000 bucks. That's definitely worth it. I mean, truth be told, I actually didn't even even need to do sugar beets as a field because another good way to do sugar beets, speaking of like making lots of money off some, is contracts. If you just pick up a couple contracts that have sugar beets, the overflow of sugar beets you get from the contract, it's usually enough to supply all you need, actually. But I don't mind doing my own field. Alrighty, how's our water doing? I haven't checked it in a while. It's doing alright. Like we already processed all the flour. Bakery's good to go. Looks like we're doing alright. Uh, storing, we want to store? Yeah, we want to store, because if we hit to distribute, then it'll go to the bakery. And we don't want that yet, just yet. We want to be able to sell all that sugar. Um, Do we fast forward? And at least get some some fertilizing done. So this one more load finish, and then we will probably fast forward after that. I mean, sugar beets do take a while to harvest. <laughs> kind of like the vegetables on the uh, Zelanka save. All this type of stuff takes takes a good chunk of time to, to actually get harvested properly. Should we? Need to do any more stuff here? Okay, I was gonna say I thought one of these fields was about to be um, need to be repurchased. These other ones are close, and then do we need pH on any of these fields? Maybe we're okay on this one for maybe one more harvest. This one we seem to be okay on as well. This one up here looked like it was a little bit lower. No, it's good. I think it's just a different color because it is about to time out. So we got at least one more harvest on all of the pH, so we don't have to do any lime just yet.
Really? Come on. <laughs> I know you're... I know you can do it. There you go. So weird. So, so, so touchy. Why are you being so touchy? It's very hard to drive next to you, sir, if you can't see that you're lined up properly. I did four bales from the wheat, and then I sold them. Uh, I sold them. What was the problem? Because now I want to do cows. I'm not sure what the problem was, what you're referring to. But, um, yeah, obviously cows just need straw, hay, and silage to make the TMR. I mean, you don't technically have to make TMR for cows. It is advisable, I would say. But you can definitely get by with just... Or ass right and hay, I think, individually? Or is it silage and hay or something like that? But uh, I would definitely recommend to go into the trouble getting the TMR for sure. Makes them 100% productive. Although I'm sure somebody online has done the math on overall value. I think for baby cows, like uh, when they're calves and they're not making milk yet, I think you can get by with just feeding them grass or something like that. And it's not actually detrimental. All right, come on. Sugar beets. Yeah, TMR worth it for dairy cows, not worth it for meat cows. That makes sense. Makes sense. Come on. <laughs> Where's the spot? That's so weird. Nowhere. Seriously. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the very, very end it finds the spot. I don't understand. You download a mod that will do the TMR for you? Yeah. Um, obviously, there is also the... Uh, very expensive, mind you. But there is also the, uh, the little cow barn here that does the uh, TMR for you as well. With the feeding robot, does all that for you. It's pretty cool.
I mean, I personally have this other thing as well that I like a lot that I'm using on my Zelanka, or I think I was going to use it on my Zelanka save at some point. Uh, this cow feed mixer. It's just a mod that allows you to mix all the different hay, straw, and, and uh, silage, and then it spits out TMR. Just a way to make it easier to do it all in bulk. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. Exactly what you're talking about, Shane. I think that's... We're talking about similar things. They work really nicely. Alrighty. Um... Yeah, it's going to take a little while longer, sugar beets. I mean, we're more than halfway done, but still a lot to go. We just done two loads or we done three already? It's two. So 78,000 liters. Probably going to get another at least 60,000 more to go. It's a pretty good amount of, amount of sugar beets. So let's say it's, let's call it 140,000 liters of sugar beets. Divide that in half. That's 70,000 liters of sugar at how much per sugar? I mean, worst case, 500, but it's going to be more than that. So let's say 500, just for giggles. That's 35,000 bucks. Plus the extra, maybe a little extra. So maybe it might be 45,000 bucks once you add on some extra stuff. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, added in on with everything else, we're making, we're probably making, are we making 200,000 bucks a year now? We're close to it, 100, 100. Oh, I forget what I said for the other stuff. Uh, I think I said 90. Did I say 90 for the uh, bread and, sh and eggs? Another, what, 40 for the uh, silage, right? Something like that. It's 130 and another 45. So about 175,000 bucks. I might be missing it a little bit, but it's pretty close. But I see the new beets and sugar beet harvester. Um, Where would that be at? I'm actually not sure. Um, I mean, I've seen the new beets, um, like the one that uses the vegetables here. So with the red beets, I've, I've seen that one for sure. But you said sugar beet harvester. I'm not sure about a new sugar beet harvester. Unless it's one of these that you're talking about, but, um, is this one new? Maybe that one is new. Obviously, all these self-propelled ones are so expensive. I almost never use these, so they're just too expensive to, to justify most of the time. Hundred meters working with I'm not sure hundred meters? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh, on my hub? Yeah, okay. That makes sense. You know what I should have been doing this whole time? Totally was not thinking about it. Um, 
And I'll go ahead and get started on it now. But because our planter, yeah, I was gonna say our planter does not do the plowing, so we need to be doing plowing this whole time. Silly me. Kind of forgot. Still wish the side over here was functional. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't do anything. Oh boy. I mean, that's part of the reason why I don't do sugar beets very often is because they're very tedious. <laughs> they, they definitely take a while. Same thing with potatoes. They take a while. I mean, ideally, it'd be nice to have a second tractor and a second harvester here, but that's more than we want to spend on this, I think. Especially since we want to get the cows going. But it would, you know, if it cuts the time of this in half, I mean, from a dollar per stream hour standpoint, it might actually be worth it. Do I watch Farm Sim News on DJ Gohan? I do not. I'm actually not familiar with that. Yeah, 
Yeah, not not familiar, but I interesting. I'll be honest with you. There are a lot of farming simulator creators out there that I will never ever watch because I I find their content quite annoying. Um and and misleading. Like there's a lot of farming simulator creators out there that will be like I make $20 million in six months on farming simulator. Whatever. It, it's not real. It's not, none of it's real. <laughs> it makes no sense. So I, I get annoyed by some of them guys because unfortunately those, those particular videos get a lot of views, but I've watched a couple of them and it's like they're 12, you know, they're five years into it and they've only made like 50,000 bucks. So yeah, they can claim that they're going to make 20 million, but like a billion dollars in five years or something like that. But then five years into it, they've made $50,000, you know, it's like, okay, are you going to go back and edit your title on your first video that got, you know, half a million views and was a big fat lie? No, <laughs> it annoys me. It annoys the crud out of me. I'm not a huge fan of, I mean, clickbait's bad enough, but dishonest clickbait, like completely dishonest clickbait is very, very bad. So yeah, there's a lot of, I'm not saying that's what that guy does. But there's a lot of creators that do, and it's very not good. There's a... Uh there's a couple guys that do similar stuff with Civilization VI that annoys me as well. That could be stuff like, you know, I built every wonder in the game. And then you go watch their video and it's like, hack, 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 mod, 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 you know, restart, restart, restart. And it's like, okay, so you didn't just play a game and build every wonder in the game. You, you save scummed with hacks and mods until you built every wonder in the game. I don't think that counts. <laughs> Pretty sure that doesn't count. And at least it doesn't count in my book. I do not find that impressive at all. But unfortunately, those types of videos get views. So it is what it is. There's a few creators out there, though, for Farming Simulator that still, I would consider, I don't know, for lack of a better word, honorable. As in, their content is, you know, realistic. And, and if they're going to do, like, mods, they at least call it out early and talk about, you know, it's just for the fun factor and stuff like that, which makes sense to me. So there's quite a few of those, I, I will admit. But there's just, unfortunately, a, a good number that are not so, so great. Like, I've watched Dagger win stuff before. I've, I've never had any problem with most of his stuff. And there's a few creators that do, like, um, more like guides and stuff like that. Um, but I've watched a few of those guys as well. Yeah, I don't know what you mean by a 100 meter harvester. I'm not sure what that means. 100 meter? Like you're talking about 100 meter wide? Because that makes no sense to me. Why would you have a 100 meter wide harvester? That is not... Do those exist in real life? Let me look that up. 100 meter harvester in real life. Is that a real thing in real life?
can I mean that's that's insane, right? The foot. I mean, it's not quite a football field because I know meters and yards are different, but like the way I could put it in my perspective, like there's no way that's not logical, right? Yeah, there's no such thing. Like that's like the only thing that's not like that's not a tractor. That would be a a like a machine that would go across the field, similar to like one of the, some of those uh um sprayers. But that's not you're gonna have a harvester that does that. Yeah, I don't understand a hundred meter harvester. It makes no sense. Unless you mean it holds a hundred. No, I don't. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't, what is a hundred meter harvester? I don't understand that at all. Why is that a thing? He cuts a hundred. Yeah, I'm not sure if I understand. You're talking a hundred meters wide. That makes no sense. I don't know, my trailer's in the way. For my plow dude. I'm assuming you mean something else, and I'm <laughs> just misunderstanding. Oh, you're going to run into the trailer. Why would it have a hundred meter wide head? That makes no sense. Why? That's, that's so silly. Why? Let me guess. It goes like a hundred miles an hour too, or something stupid. <laughs> yeah, I gotta. I mean, I guess to eat your own if you like that kind of thing, but I. I don't know. I don't need a harvester that's got the width of an entire field and can go across it in 2.3 seconds and harvest it all. Like, that's, there's no, where's, I mean, it's interesting that somebody came up with the idea, I guess, but I don't, I don't see the, I don't know if I see the fun in that. <laughs> yeah okay all right people are crazy people are crazy 
<laughs> like why? Why? Is that is that fun? I don't know. It's not fun for me. I wouldn't I would never have fun with something like that. Okay, I, let me rephrase that. I might have fun for five seconds, literally the time it took to harvest one field. And then I'd be like, all right, I did it. I'm never going to do that again. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like fun for like, like one harvest. And you're like, okay, that was kind of interesting. And then it's like, okay, never mind. <laughs> that kind of defeats the whole point of the game at that point. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I mean, I have the T4 whatever mod, right? I have that mod in here somewhere. I was just looking at it, but I don't think it's got any of the crazy heads, right? Yeah, it's just got the regular 5.4 meter head. Well, I have that, that mod that you're talking about, but that's the realistic one. I mean, it's interesting, I guess. Again, to each their own, but... I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't get the point. I mean, to be fair, a harvest takes X amount of time. And at the end of the day, does that time actually bring value to the to the effort put into it? Like, is there value because this harvest took me an hour versus if it took me 30 minutes? Is there more value one way or the other? So if I'm going to increase the time from one hour to 30 minutes, is there really that much difference? I increased it from 30 minutes to 30 seconds. Like, I don't know. I mean, I guess there is, but it's just like, I don't know. It's funny. That's interesting. <laughs> it's funny. I'll, I'll give you that. It's a, it's a funny thing. Like, how do you even get the header to the field? Like, what? Is there a trailer? Is it pulled on a trailer that's 100 meters long? Like, how in the world? Let me guess. It, it like... It looks like it's only 4 meters wide, but it harvests 100 meters. Something like... Like, like the only way that would be f halfway... Into it, come on. Stop it, dude. There you go. Um, is if it, like... If it legitimately was a 100 meter wide header. It's fold. It folds. It folds. Oh, I just realized. Are you full? Now there we go. Um, that's interesting. It folds. Um, let me let me have you keep going, and I will have the red tractor drop that off. What does a hundred meters of width look like folded up? Like that's that's insane. I I can't think of what that would look like. I mean, I guess. Okay, let me see. Let me before I just. It's completely completely crazy. I mean, the widest headers are what twenty meters. Aren't there some twenty meter ones or something like that? No, I guess fifteen fifteen meters. So it's what eight of those? No, less than that. Seven of those. Basically, seven of those. Hmm. It's pretty wide. I don't know what that's going to look like. Fold up. That's insane. The invisible pickup is wide. Okay. We do the unrealistic one or the realistic one. Interesting. That's so weird. Oh, well. What will they think up next?
I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't have all my settings on realistic all the time as it is personally either. Like, I don't have crop destruction turned on because for me, crop destruction is just kind of like, eh, whatever. It's not really, it doesn't really add any joy to the game for me. So I just turn it off and just don't even think about it. But I feel like there's a big difference between turning off crop destruction, which all that does is it saves me from having to make weird paths. If I had crop destruction turned on, I would just make slightly different paths that would take a little bit longer. Um, there's a big difference between that and having a header. It's a hundred meters wide. I'm just, I don't know. I feel like I'm at least within the realm of realism. <laughs> I'm realm. I'm realism adjacent, as opposed to <laughs> fantasy land. This is funny, but it's funny. Somebody came up with the idea. I mean, just out of curiosity, how wide is this field we're on right now? All right, we are at... We're at 14... 14.46. I mean, I don't know if I went completely straight line but we're at basically this field right here is basically 100 meters wide so it's basically this entire field <laughs> that's, that's all it's it's interesting i'll give you that this field in one swipe No, I get, I get what you're saying, like the big Walker Farms stuff. It, you know, helps make those easier. But I gotta ask you, here's the thing. Farming Simulator is a game of relativity, right? And, and what I mean by that is, is a small sugar beet har harvester on a small field really that much different than a big harvester on a big field? At the end of the day, you take X amount of time to harvest X amount of sugar beets to make X amount of money. Like, it's all relative, right? So, you could you could do a perfectly good farming simulator run on a very very tiny field with hand tools. You know, it, it you get you get a relatively small amount of money, but for the what you're doing, it works, right? So, I guess for me, there's never been any. I've never seen the value of running like a massive massive field just to make ten million bucks with one harvest, like. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. I just don't, I, I don't, again, not knocking anybody who enjoys that by all means, everybody enjoys what they enjoy. And that's, that's the way this, that's the cool thing about this game. You can enjoy it however you want. But for me, it's like, if I did that, I would do it once. And then I would put down the controller. I would stop playing the game for the rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the year. You know, it's like, okay, I played 10 minutes of farming simulator, 
harvested one time, made 10 million bucks. I guess I'm done. I beat the game, you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. To me, it's like, what's the point? Very interesting, though. But again, like I said, it's relative. I mean, I could say the same thing about me uh, harvesting this tiny field. I mean, theoretically, I could say once I've harvested this tiny field once, I've beat the game based off some criteria that I made up and there's no point in doing it anymore. So I guess at the end of the day, you, you do what you do. You got you to gotta come up with your own story. I guess that's the big thing about Farming Simulator. You come up with your own story of how you want to uh, progress. And I guess some people want to make a billion dollars by making a 100 meter harvester go 50 miles an hour across a very large field. <laughs> you know? All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, somebody just needs to come up with a mod. It's got a giant button on the side of the field. And all you do is you walk up and push the button and everything just gets harvested automatically. <laughs> like, at some point, that's all you got to do, right? I mean, is it really that much different than a 100 meter, 100 meter wide header to just push a button and harvest the field automatically? I don't know. Advanced dev control. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> to me the creator of that mod in my mind I can't imagine the creator of that mod made that mod t for any actual usable purpose you make that kind of mod just to see if you can. Like, that that's the kind of over-the-top crazy mod that you make just because you want to stretch the limits and see what you can do. Not because you actually intend on people <laughs> actually using it. Like, that's just not, that's not, that doesn't make sense. Can I make a, can I make a harvester that's, you know, 5,000 meters wide and covers the entire map in one fell swoop? Harvest all the fields at the same time. Maybe you can. Oh, you can you can't harvest them uh, with dev tools? Yeah, okay. That makes sense that you could. Hey, hey, how's it going, Ben? All right, we're almost done with our sugar beets. Is our tractor just underpowered? Or does this really only go six miles an hour? It really only goes six miles an hour. Well, isn't that just amazing? How fast do the self-propelled ones go? They also only go six miles an hour. All right, I'm starting to see the benefit of having one that goes 50 miles an hour. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but seriously. All right, dude, just wait for a second. My friend, you're, you're catching up with the harvester. You're going too fast. Good news is, even though I forgot to start plowing until we were halfway through the field, the plowing goes fast enough that we caught up with the plow, with the harvester. So we won't have to wait for it. Wanted to run some Call of Duty. Nice. I can't believe you picked time with a friend over time with me. I just I find that very rude. And I'm kidding, by the way. Of course. Um... <laughs> I mean, if I had a friend to play Call of Duty with, I'd probably be doing Call of Duty as well. Even though I don't actually play Call of Duty that often. Specifically, what I meant is doing anything with a friend is always fun. Oh, come on. I'm not just barely. Oh. We had an angle, because I feel like I should have done that before and been that close. 
We might be at a little bit of an angle where it's a little bit off. Come on. Alright, let me just take over with you and see if I can fix it. Really? Is it doing that thing where the trigger points in a slightly bad spot again? There we go. One of three games C and I have, so that's really the only reason I play it anymore. It's not what it used to be. Nah, that's fair. FS22 is very addictive. It takes me back to when games were very addictive in 2011. Games have been very addictive for a lot longer than 2011. I'll give you that one. Because <laughs> I have been playing games. I was addicted to games as a kid many years ago. <laughs> we'll just say that. I am older than I look. Some of you guys, I've, I've mentioned how old I am a few times, but uh, I'm definitely older than I look, as, as what I've been told. I don't know if that's true or not, but I have been told I am. Oh, I got to go move that thing. Sorry, buddy. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. Forgot you had to turn wide. But no, I've been playing games for, I've been, I guess, semi-addicted to games for a very, very long time. I have to I have to be careful about using the word addicted, um, partly because there are obviously plenty of things people can be truly addicted to, and um, I want to be respectful of that. But also, it is definitely very possible to be addicted to video games, and I want to be respectful of that as well, because you know it's not a it's not good it's not it's not it's not good to be addicted to stuff. It's it can be very controlling and it's not fun. So I know we joke about being addicted to video games, but I don't want to sugarcoat the fact that it actually is a real, a real thing. I don't know if I've ever truly been addicted to video games. I have played video games at an unhealthy level before. And I guess the way I would describe that is that I remember right after, uh, right before World of Warcraft came out or right after, something like that, around, around the time it was released, um, I actually got laid off from a job. And so I spent the next, the first nine months that World of Warcraft was out, I was playing World of Warcraft 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Like literally 18 hours a day, every single day, seven days a week, because I stayed at home with my parents played all the time and then finally they came in here and they came into my bedroom one day and said hey this isn't going to cut it anymore you got to get a job it's just the best thing they could have ever done for me and i'm glad they did because obviously that led to me getting a job which led to me saving up enough money to go to college which led to me you know getting the job that i have now getting the family i have now meeting the wife that i have now and eventually i went back to world of warcraft because now i realized i can play it at a healthy level because i'm able to take care of all my normal responsibilities but there definitely was a time where I wouldn't say I was addicted so much as just I didn't have anything else to do. And because I was enjoying that so much, I decided not to do anything else and try to get a job because of it. So got to be careful with video games for sure. They're not a replacement for real life, although they can be a I think they could be an escape for real life at a, at a healthy level within reason. But you definitely don't want to replace real life with video games. I don't think there's anything wrong with coming home from a tough day at work and, uh, you know, getting on with your buddies and, I don't know, playing Call of Duty or playing Farming Simulator or whatever. I think, I think it's a great, I think it's a great tool, a great usage of video games. 
I also think video games are good for, you know, educational purposes and other things. I think there's a lot of value and a lot of bonuses for video games. Um, but I just think they're also, also, unfortunately, just like anything, if you, uh, if you abuse anything in life, it can be detrimental and video games are no different. Um, where am I going to put this stuff? I might just put it over here. I mean, if you watch too much Netflix, that can be detrimental. If you watch, if you read too many books, I mean, people talk about how books are good for you. Uh, my sister, I mean, thankfully she doesn't do it anymore, but when she was a teenager, she just avoided all social contact altogether and just read books all the time. I would say that's probably a, in fact, I think she would even admit herself that that was probably not the most healthy thing to do. Um, so any, anything can be unhealthy. What was my favorite game? I played a lot of, like, as a kid, I played a lot of strategy games. There was a series of games by, I don't know how to pronounce it, K-O-E-I, Koei, Ko Koei, something like that. Anyway, they made a series of Super Nintendo games. Um, there was one called Liberty or Death. There was one called PTO. And then there was one called, oh, I forget what there's another one that I played. Um, like, obviously, Liberty or Death, I mean, is, it was like a revolutionary war game. Uh, PTO was a... Pacific Theater of Operations, so it was a Pacific Theater for World War II. Uh, and I think they had one for European Theater as well, which I don't remember the name of. But I played those games a lot as a kid. Uh, I enjoyed strategy games like that a lot. These games to take out frustration because it's frowned upon to do so in public. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it is frowned upon to take out your frustrations in public. I would agree. I would, I would, I would think it would be better to get into a boxing game in, in, a, in a Vita game. Or, you know, get into a race car game and just drive as fast as you can in a race car game than to do that in real life. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Video games are can be very helpful. Just, just make sure you understand. And I, I, I mean, you, you do your life, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But my advice would be: make sure you don't forget there is a very beautiful real world out there. And uh, I don't know. Go outside, get some fresh air. <laughs> I probably don't get fresh air as much as I should, but come summer, I will. Uh, come summer, I usually go out and do stuff with the kids. We go hiking. We go all sorts of places around, you know, we go look at, there's actually a place near where I live where you can go and sit on the ground. It's up in the mountains here in Colorado and it's a really cool town. It's like a little, uh, it's like a ghost town almost. Um, and so you actually have to, you have to actually take a pretty rough little dirt road trail to get up to the, the town. And it's up, like I said, high in the mountains and they have this, uh, this tree that, uh, you know, there's like a little, little, it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like a tree in the middle of this town. And you can go inside the little general store there, get a bag of, uh, sunflower seeds and just go down and sit there and you'll get dozens upon dozens of chipmunks that'll come and crawl over all over you, sit on your arms, sit on your hands, and you can feed these little chipmunks. And so we took our kids to do that last year. It was just the coolest thing. So stuff like that. I mean, there's a, there's a good, beautiful world out there. Does not mean you cannot play video games. I will never, ever agree with people that say that video games are the cause of violence or anything like that. I think, I think there's other reasons why violence exists besides video games. Um, but taken healthily, you know, taken at a healthy dosage, if you will, I think video games are amazing. I think they're a great, a great way to learn and grow and, and do good things. I mean, Hey, I'm trying to make a living right now doing video game stuff. I went to college to learn how to do video game design. And so someday I would like to, someday I keep saying it and, and, and someday needs to be just, needs to just happen. Like I just need to sit down and do it, but someday I want to make my own video game. And, uh, there's plenty of guys that have made their own video games that and it doesn't even have to be successful for me. If I made a video game and a thousand people bought it, I would consider that successful. I'd be like, that's pretty awesome. Right. A thousand people bought a video game. That's pretty awesome. Um, but there's some people that have made some video games by themselves that have sold tons of, tons of copies. So you never know if it's a good enough idea. It doesn't have to be even great graphics. There are so many games out there that do not have great graphics. They're just a good idea that sell a ton of copies. So there's definitely a way to make some money off of that. Have you tried Age of Empires? Yes, I, I, Age of Empires was a game I grew up on as well. Um, 
all the way back to the original. First Age of Empires, uh, and then, of course, I played Age of Kings. Age of Kings was fun. I loved Age of Kings because Age of Kings introduced a way for you to submit your own, um, effectively, your own AI scripts, right? You could script out your own AI build orders and conditions and things like that. And so a buddy and me, we used to create our own AI uh, scripts and battle them against each other in, in Age of Kings. It was a really cool feature, really cool way that they did it. Um, and so it really got me into the idea of coding and scripting and things of that nature back in the, back in the Age of Kings days. I really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, I have not played Age of Empires, was it 4 is what they're up to now? I haven't played that one that much. Um, I w I'd like to play it more at some point, but I just haven't really got it. Truth be told, it's hard for me to play real-time strategy games these days. Um, I feel like my my <laughs> my motor controls are as slower than they used to be, uh, so I prefer the turn-based strategy to the real-time strategy, but I, I do still enjoy the real-time stuff. All right, we got, what, 15 minutes left in stream. Um, we got all the plowing done. We got the fertilizing done. We No, not yet. Sorry, that's next month. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get, we'll fast forward to get the fertilizing done. Um, yeah, let's go. Yes, it's Age of Empires. Um, what else back in the day? I mean, obviously the old Warcraft days is what got me introduced to World of Warcraft in the first place. Um, in fact, when Age of Empires came out, my buddy was like, hey, this is like, it's like Warcraft mixed with Civilization. You should try this Age of Empires game. And he was right. It was, it was an awesome game. <laughs> I remember some of the first games that I played before I ever had a computer. Because um, my family, I'm going to be honest with you, they didn't have a lot of money growing up. My family, my parents, my dad is a pastor. He's a minister at a church and my mom is a school teacher and neither one of those jobs pays a lot of money. So we didn't have a lot of money growing up. Um, so I didn't have a computer. We didn't have a computer in our house until, um, I don't know. I was probably 16, maybe. I don't know. It was, it was for most of my life. We didn't ever had a computer at home. And so what would happen is I would, I would just be friends with either the computer lab teacher at school, or I had a, I had a teacher that he actually uh, ran the, uh, in middle school, he ran the, um, the, uh, whatever it's called, the, uh, with all the power saws and stuff like that, like shop class. He ran shop class and he had a really nice computer in his office. And so he would let me go into his office late at night. He'd just say, hey, lock up when you leave. And he would let me stay there till I would be there till like eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. Basically, well, I guess not, not usually not till nine o'clock. I, my parents said I had to come home right before it got dark, right? So I'd be in his office, technically having access to all of these power saws and drills and things like that. But probably, probably not the safest thing in the world, but oh well. And so I'd be in his office playing like, uh, I think I played, uh, I forget which game it was called, but it was like a sub submarine simulator game. I love that game a lot. I'd play like flight simulators, all sorts of games in his office. I was so much fun. And uh, yeah, I love I doing stuff like that a lot. So that's how I got introduced to computers is just by befriending my teachers and them letting me stay in their offices late at night and play games as long as I wanted to. I remember my computer lab teacher. I was the only student she let have the admin password for all the computers. So, uh, and she didn't mind that I installed video games on the computers of the computer lab. So I would do that. It was just, it was funny. I don't know. I mean, my, I guess before that, my mom, again, my mom was a teacher. She didn't always have a computer in her, in her, uh, her classroom. But I remember at one of her schools that she's taught at, like she did have a, she had like a old Apple IIe or something like that. And so I played, I played a ton of Oregon Trail back in the day as well. <laughs> Oregon Trail was the game back on the Apple IIe days. Or maybe it was just, maybe it was the early Mac or something like that. I don't remember which one of those. I think she had both. But of course, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo is probably my favorite console. Um, cause I felt like personally, it's not, it's not a, it's not true across the board, but I felt like on whole, when you went from the Super Nintendo to the N64, 
I felt like they sacrificed a lot of gameplay to introduce a lot of graphics. So I felt like the games in the N64 days were just not as good. They looked good, well, relatively, I mean, to the time period. They looked better, but I feel like the gameplay suffered uh, compared to Super Nintendo days. I felt like when you had... Um, why are you not going straight? I felt like when you had um, less graphics, you had to bump up the gameplay quality a bit more because otherwise the game was like, what's the point? Like, a bad graphic, bad gameplay video game is just a bad game, right? But, you know, you can get by with bad gameplay if it's got amazing graphics, and you can get by with bad graphics if it's amazing gameplay. Oregon Trail is a great game. It really is. It's such a good game. Simple game, honestly. Very simple game. <laughs> Saying it was educational. I like that. Hey, Civilization um, 4 or 5, one of those two got me through college. I think it was Civilization 4 probably. I played that game in the back of the classroom all the time. I love that game. <laughs> um, all right, what are we doing now? We got the harvest or fertilizing done. Let's check the chickens. Chickens are okay. Um, water, water's okay. It is November, normally we'd be selling eggs right now. Oh, we probably don't have enough eggs. Well, I mean, I could go pick up a few eggs and sell them real quick if I wanted to. Oh, it depends on how many we actually have. Close to place to sell. Actually, the fast food restaurant would be... We could just drop them off right across the road. Let's do that. How can you do dried corn in FS22? Probably with a mod. I can almost guarantee you there's got to be a mod out there for dried corn. But it's not, uh, it's not in the base game or anything like that. There's probably mods for just about everything. I mean, there's probably mods for, uh, for growing other questionable crops. I, I would have to imagine there has to be questionable crop mods <laughs> somewhere out there. I, I don't know. I hope you know what I mean by questionable crop mods. <laughs> Those of the less legal nature, depending on where you live in the world. Um... I'm sure those exist somewhere. So if those exist, I'm sure dried corn exists as well. Maze Plus. Okay, I, I have heard of Maze Plus. I did not realize it specifically was the one that did dried corn. But I have I've definitely heard of that one. I've actually heard that's a pretty good mod in general. I've heard there's actually a lot of good features to that mod in, in general, isn't there? Alma, Missouri map. Nice. All right. So corns or not corn. Um, eggs are sold. Uh, what else we got? We have bread coming up. Don't have a lot of bread currently made. Probably there's something else I'm missing, but I guess not. Yeah, I figure there's some DLC for, or some, some mods for the, uh, those types of crops. I mean, I, I don't want to get myself in trouble. I mean, I, I personally live in a place where on a state level, you know, stuff like that is, is legal. Um, still, it's still illegal on the federal level, which is a really weird thing. Um... I'm personally of the mindset that if it can grow naturally, I don't really see why you can make something like that illegal. Like, how, how, why can you make something illegal that can grow naturally out in the world? That to me is a little bit weird. Um, but, um, I don't mind restrictions around stuff like that. Obviously, hops, you know, to make beer and stuff like that grows naturally out in the world. But I think there's, it's right to have restrictions around 
drinking ages and stuff like that and drinking and driving. I think that's all makes sense. But making it outright illegal seems a little weird to me. And then, um, but anything that's like manufactured in a lab, stuff like that probably should be. I could see that being made illegal because that's a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit different to me. I don't know. Anyway, um, let's see here. What's, what was I going to do? My brain just, my brain just shut off. <laughs> it's December. What are we doing in December? Oh, you know, I haven't been checking the news a lot. Ooh, look at you. You are a nice little tractor. And by little, I mean about as big as the ones we got, right? Not quite as big. You actually, it looks bigger. Like it looks beefier, but I guess the, the, the highest horsepower you can get on this is 183. So even though it looks kind of, it looks kind of beefy. Maybe it's just because of the how short it is. It's actually not as powerful. Um. All right. Um. We were gonna sell bread. I think that's what I was gonna check. My brain is all over the place. It's almost like there's only five minutes left in the stream, and I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> uh, bread is January. Oh, it's actually January now. Really. All right, we'll wait till January. January will also be silage selling month. Play FS on Xbox, so you don't have access to all the cool kid mods. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I wish you did, because that's a shame. a little trailer i mean we already got one but a little roller all right uh let's get the i guess we'll get some bread sold real quick johnson for oh red bowl red marble bowling restaurant all right well actually if we don't have that much bread it might not be worth it probably better just to take the silage which is not quite there Okay. Should have silage now. Um, yep. I'm actually going to use the other tractor. Alrighty. Uh, let's get you dropped off. I'll probably just take these two loads and then we'll call the stream there. It might put us a little bit over, but that's okay. Come on. Look up. You can do it. There you go. <laughs> Keep forgetting that we can make this tractor more powerful, too. I just haven't spent the money to do it. We haven't needed it yet, but it would definitely be a decent, decent idea. Sickness is telling me that, reminding me that I'm still sick. Got a lot of crud. Yes, this is my, uh, this is not my Stanley. This is my wife, Stanley. I have one of those wives. <laughs> she loves the Stanleys. Is is Stanley is the Stanley Crave just an American thing, or is that a worldwide thing? Some of you guys will have to tell me that one, because 
It's definitely all over the place in America. Or if it's not Stanley, is there another like cup alternative that women in other parts of the world just go crazy about? I mean, for a while there, it was, uh, was it Yeti or whatever? And then it turned into Stan. I, I don't know. It's so funny. To me, I don't care. It just keeps my drink cold. <laughs> it's like, whatever. <laughs> my wife has one. She spent $100 on this cup because she spent $50 on the cup. And then she spent another $50 to send it off to somebody on Etsy to get it engraved, like in a, some really cool design all the way the, around the entirety of the cup. And I'll give you this. It looks really cool. It does look really cool. But I don't know why you would spend $100 on a drinking cup. I'm just saying, you know. I mean, for $100, I'm glad that it did turn out very well. It did. It does look really awesome. We Americans are very weird about a lot of things. One could say that us Americans are spoiled brats across the board because <laughs> we have things that like we we care about some of the most silly, frivolous, nonsensical things that in other parts of the world are just like struggling to to live each day. It's like it, when you think about it from that perspective, it's like, really? But it is what it is. So. Yeah, there's the kids game right there. I do have a, um, I do have a emulator that I downloaded for um, Android, and I was thinking about just putting it on that and trying to start trying that out. I might, I might do that because it's only going to be three bucks, but I don't know. I'll think about it. I might, I might do a video of that sometime this week just to kind of show it off, just to see what it looks like. Oh, we are spoiled. We are absolutely spoiled. It's just. I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> I mean, I didn't choose to be born in the United States, so it's not like, you know, I didn't really have a choice in the matter. And even in the United States, we have our own problems that are just different, different flavor. Every, everybody in the world has their own problems. Problems have different, different tiers, I suppose. I mean, I have a friend who lives in the Ukraine. And she sent me a video the other day of her literally covering her ears with rockets landing behind her and you could see the explosions and hear the explosions. And you know, obviously she was scared to death. She was freaked out. And she just was trying to, you know, sharing some traumatic experience with me. Just kind of, you know, she wanted, she because she knows I care. And yet she still cares about the fact that, you know, I've been sick for the last couple of days, you know? And it's like, I don't know. When you talk to somebody who has real life and death problems, and then you, you know, and then I'm sitting here like, you know, <laughs> I'm so sick, you know, and yet she still shows concern. It just, I don't know, it kind of puts things in perspective that, you know, we all have our own problems. They're different levels. I mean, I think we should all find ways to find joy in the world that we live in, whatever that world looks like, and then uh, kind of go from there. But I don't know. It's hard to, it puts things into perspective. I'll say that. When you when you get a video about somebody dealing with a real life and death you know situation, but um, and again, like I said, when they when they actually still show concern for you just because you're sick for a couple of days, it's uh, it's just interesting, the world we live in. All right, we're up to 60,000 bucks, so we could sell that other trailer and get the chopping one. We don't need it yet, so I guess we'll just, we'll wait until we do need it. But we're, we're $60,000, well, 
minus the trailer, sixty thousand dollars minus the trailer, closer to getting our cows. <laughs> That's all we got left is to get the cows and get all that set up, and then we're done making. We're ready to make cakes. No, you're right. Uh, I would agree that spending time outside of the United States does put life into perspective in the United States or even any any developed, you know, highly developed country, right? You know, you go spend times in a, you know, less developed or just less fortunate country or whatever. It'll put things in perspective for sure. Alrighty. Well, that is the silage. Um, and it's January of a new year. So we're ready to, uh, ready to start the cycle again. So next stream, we will definitely be getting into the planting phase, of course, for both the sugar beets and the sorghum. Um, and at this point, we really are just saving up, you know, 400,000 bucks for basically to at least get started on the cows. It's a lot of money, but I think that's going to be too... I think we could get very close in two years. We might not quite get there, but I think two years will be very close. And then in that third year, we'll be able to get the cows. So we'll see. We're not too far away. And then after the cows, that's lit that's it, right? We're just making cakes at that point. So we are we are very close, guys. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to be it for today. I appreciate everybody that came out and joined up. Like I said, watch the channel if you are interested at all in the Farming Simulator Kids game. I'm trying to figure out a way to get it and get the, everything set up to kind of show that off. Just to kind of see what it's about you know if you have kids you might be interested if not obviously who cares <laughs> but um my next live stream should be saturday assuming i'm feeling well it'll be some civilization six followed by monday with some farming or football manager and then this game again on next wednesday um yeah i do appreciate everybody came out and uh may god bless you and i hope you join me again next time